walking through, they started harassing him, uh, they called him names, and they would hit him and they would throw stones and rocks and whatever they could find. And Zayn bin Haritha was with him at that moment. He tried his best to protect the Prophet from harm with his own body. And he got injured very badly, not only himself, but even the Prophet and some narrations mention that the Prophet upon leaving Ta'if, the blood was, uh, you know, uh, traveling down his body from his head down to his feet, uh, such an extent that uh, his sandals became, his sandals stuck to his feet due to the amount of blood that was gushing down, pouring down. So this was the state and this was, what was the reason? Why was the Prophet ﷺ being treated this way? He wasn't asking them for money. He wasn't asking them uh, for marriage. He wasn't asking them for anything worldly. The only reason they treated the Prophet ﷺ that way was because he came with that message uh, and he told them to stop worshipping what you worship and these people, they treated the Prophet ﷺ in this very horrible way. Now, the narrations mention that uh, once the Prophet ﷺ, uh, was about to leave Ta'if and he faced all this hardship and this difficulty and this abuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam two angels uh, and in the narration it mentioned that these two angels were the angels that Allah azza wa jalla had put uh, uh, they were in charge of the two mountains that surrounds Ta'if and uh, Jibreel alayhi salam said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam give the command and these two angels will bring the two mountains together and these uh, people in life will perish. Just like that. Blink of an eye, they will be gone. Forgotten in history. But the Prophet wasallam, he was a prophet of mercy. He was a prophet that uh, had foresight. A prophet that not, did not, the Prophet wasallam, never ever <coughs> entire life sought revenge for himself. This is an important point and this is something that we should all try to uh, aspire to. <clears throat> Meaning that if the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were broken, then the Prophet wasallam would always take a firm stance and he would not let anything go by. If a rich person stole something, the rich person would be held accountable. If a poor person stole something, then they would be held responsible within their means. Now, the Prophet وسلم, he was the Prophet Nabi Rahmah. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً بِالْعَالَمِينَ that we have not sent you Muhammad وسلم, except as a mercy for alameen, for all mankind. Not just mankind, Adam, the scholars they say, is everything that Allah has created. So the Prophet ﷺ is a mercy to mankind, the Prophet ﷺ is a mercy to the jinn, the Prophet ﷺ is a mercy to the animals. Every single thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, the Prophet ﷺ was a mercy towards all these creations. So the Prophet ﷺ said, a very beautiful statement, and I want us all to ponder on this statement, uh, brothers and sisters. The Prophet wasallam said, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings from these people offspring that will believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that even though the Prophet wasallam was hurt by the actions of these people, the Prophet وسلم, tried to look for a silver lining. He tried to look for something that 
uh, you know, some kind of benefit out of this. And this, the scholars in Islam have said that it should be the way that Muslims approach every single aspect in life. That even if, let's say, you bump heads with someone, you, you get into a disagreement, you fight, and you have this great hatred, even though as Muslims you shouldn't, but let's say it happens, humans are humans. Now, what you should be doing as a Muslim is you should try your best to take a step back and try your best to be as close to the Prophet ﷺ, not only in your speech saying that the Prophet ﷺ did and he said and so on, but most importantly in your actions. Who from amongst us has gone to a place where they were literally stoned and blood was gushing down? No one. Or at the very least, very, very few people. And out of those people who had the opportunity to really take revenge the way that the Prophet ﷺ had the opportunity. And this is the side benefit that you, the scholars in Islam, they say you only know how merciful a person is if they've been wrong and they have the opportunity, the chance to take revenge, and then they leave it off. This is a completely different level. It's not the same level as someone that has been wrong, and he's angry, but because he can't do anything, he says, I forgive the person. The person couldn't do anything to begin with. Doesn't mean that he's, he won't get a reward still, but if you compare the one that is possible to take the revenge, and the one that is not, then the person that was able to take the revenge, but forgave for the sake of Allah, and he said, I leave this for the sake of Allah, that person has a greater reward in front of Allah. And this is why in the, in the Quran that Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, always mentions uh, forgiveness, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal praises those type of people who when they become angry and they're about to retaliate and they have the ability to retaliate, they forgive. And again, that is a completely diff different level and this is the level of the prophets and this is the level of the highest people. So the Prophet ﷺ left the matter there and <coughs> later on we will come to, to, to find out that the people uh, in Ta'if, later on in the Sirah, they were actually very great companions, great people, scholars in Islam that came from these same people who disbelieved. And this literally puts a very good example, it shows us a very good example of that famous saying that people say nowadays, they say, uh, you know, you shouldn't uh, be too you shouldn't be too quick to judge. Imagine if the Prophet ﷺ, in that moment of anger, he had taken his full revenge. So it is always good to try your best to take a step back uh, and be as close to the Prophet ﷺ in all your actions. Uh, one important uh, or interesting, not that important, but still very interesting encounter that happened in Ta'if was that the Prophet وسلم, he met a young man called Addas. <clears throat> Addas was one of the few people who lived in uh, Ta'if that ended up believing in the Prophet and he was actually a Christian. He was actually a Christian. And when he encountered the Prophet وسلم, he happened to be a slave. And he presented some food to the Prophet وسلم, 
And the Prophet ﷺ, before eating the food, said, Bismillah. And this young man was shocked by the statement. And he said, this is the type of statement that I know from our people, meaning the Christians. And the Prophet ﷺ asked him, he said, where are you from? What country? And he asked him, what is your religion? The young man said, I am Christian. And he said, I am from a city or a place called uh, Nainu. And when the Prophet ﷺ heard about this city or the place called Nainu, the Prophet ﷺ said, is that the place of Yunus bin Matta, the uh, uh, Prophet Yunus alayhi salam? And the young man was shocked. He said, what do you know about Yunus? How do you know about Yunus alayhi salam? And the Prophet sallallahu told him, he said, Yunus alayhi salam is my brother. We came with the same message, the message of Tawheed, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, that message of Tawheed, of believing in Allah, alone, worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal alone, and believing in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all the other prophets as well. And when the young man heard this, he became so happy. He became so happy, he hugged the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he uh, 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 proclaimed uh, his faith in Islam and he said the Shahada right there and then. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left Ta'if and even though, and this is important to mention, even though the people of Ta'if did not end up believing in the Prophet ﷺ, we as Muslims, we do not say that the trip that the Prophet ﷺ took to Ta'if was a lost trip. Right? Some people when they talk about uh, uh, accomplishments, they say the Prophet ﷺ went to Ta'if and he did not succeed and he came back. Or they say the Prophet ﷺ, uh, fought in the battle of Uhud and he lost. No, as Muslims we don't put it in those type of terms. Every single thing that happened was the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and out of that encounter the Prophet 